Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is about dot products. So last video, we learned about vector addition and scalar multiplication, but now we're going to talk about the third one, and that is a dot product. This is where you do a vector times a vector. Now when you do a vector times a vector, you actually get a scalar. You get a single number rather than a new vector. So here's the definition. If you have uh, two vectors, u and v, and you multiply them, it's going to be you multiply the first two things, u1, v1, Multiply the second things, u2, v2, and just add them together. All right, and then here's some properties as well. So let's try a couple. Find the dot product of each. So I'm going to do 4 times 2, which is 8. 5 times 3 is 15. Add them together at 23. Because again, two vectors, you do a dot product, you get a single number, a scalar. Here, 2, negative 1 times 1, 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 2 plus negative 2, meaning 2 minus 2 is 0. And then here, 0, 3 times 4, negative 2. Do the first times first, last times last. So we're not really foiling, it's just first part times first part, last part on last part. And you get negative 6. All right, so notice you can get a positive, negative, and 0 when doing a dot product. Here's some more complicated ones. Here are three vectors, find each dot product. First one is dot product of u and v, and then times that by w. Now I do u and v first, I get negative 14. Then it's going to be negative 14 times w. Now this is a scalar times a vector. So a scalar times a vector, just basically distribute in. Just multiply each part of the, each component of the vector by the scalar. So basically a dot product times another vector will still be a vector. Two vectors will try to mix a scalar, and then a scalar times a vector is still a vector. All right, this one, two, u times 2v. So you can uh, do the 2 later or first, doesn't matter. But uh, you do the dot product from 4, negative 14, times by 2 is negative 28. All right, dot product magnitude. From one of the properties, we noticed v times v, so dot product of v with itself is really its magnitude squared. So, if you know the dot product of u with itself is 5, what's the magnitude? So we use that formula. Magnitude squared is dot product u times u. If u times u is 5, you just fill it in. To square both sides, you get square root of 5. So one of the biggest formulas you can learn is the this form right here. And it helps us find the angle between any two vectors. So the angle between any two vectors, uh, between a 0 and pi, if they're in standard form, so they're using the origin or a component for you to say that, is going to be this. Cosine of theta equals the dot product of vector u times v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Alright, so let's try this. So here we have vector u if from 0, 0 to 4 because it's component form, and vector v, 0, 0 to 3, 5 find this angle theta. So just use the formula. Dot product 4, 3 times 3, 5 because it's 27. Magnitude of u. If you want to do a Pythagorean theorem here or a distance formula, notice this is 4 squared plus 3 squared. That's uh, 25 squared. 25 is 5. So that's 5. Then uh, this is uh, 3 squared 9 plus 5 squared. That's 25 is 34. Squared 34 is the square 34. Can't reduce that. That's it. So now we know cosine theta is this, is this value. We're going to solve for theta by arc cosing or inverse cos both sides. Get about 22.2 degrees. All right. Also, if you solve this formula uh, by getting rid of the fraction, you get its alternate form. All right. So it gives us a new way to calculate the dot product. The dot product is also equal to the two magnitudes times the cosine of the theta uh, of the angle. So from this form, you can always see that uh, the magnitudes are always positive numbers. We talk about distance or length as positive. And then uh, the dot product and cosine theta will always be the same sign. So either they're both negative or they're both positive or they could both be zero, I guess. All right, so here's the five different combinations. And uh, we have what we call orthogonal vectors. So the difference is vectors u and v are orthogonal if the dot product is zero. Orthogonal just means perpendicular, right? right angles. All right, so even though the angle between the zero vector and another isn't defined, it's convenient to extend the definition 
of orthogonal orthogonality to include the zero vector. So in other words, uh, the zero vector is orthogonal to every other vector because zero times that vector is still zero. So here's an example. Are these two vectors orthogonal? Is this 90 degrees? So first, we're going to find the dot product. And we know that's zero. Because the dot product is zero, these are orthogonal. So this does make a 90 degree angle. All right, finding vector components. So, y'all know how to add two vectors, get a resulting vector, or, uh, head to tail, All right? But usually we have the reverse in life. Usually we don't have the two pieces, we have the final result, we have the ending. So we'll be able to decompose or break it down to the previous two components. And it's even better we get the two uh, orthogonal com components. All right, so in this picture, a boat's on a ramp, the force uh, the gravity pulls the boat down. That's what we know F. And we're trying to figure out what uh, W1 and W2 are. All right, W1 is the component that represents the force needed to keep the boat from rolling down the ramp, while W2 represents the force the tires have to withstand from being on the ramp, the normal force. All right, but uh, the force total for itself is these two together because we do a uh, W1 plus W2, so the end of W1, and just uh, add W2 to it, and get to this F, the final resultant. So here's the definition of vector components. If you have U and V, they're not zero. Where U is W1 plus W2, where W1 and W2 are orthogonal. And W1 is parallel to our scalar multiple of V, which will always happen then the vectors w1 w2 are called vector components of u and the vector w1 is the projection of u onto v denoted w1 is the projection of u onto v uh, this sounds like a lot but it's easier i'll show you what i mean on the next screen this isn't the best picture but anyways uh, the vector w2 will be given by w2 equals u minus w1 because remember u is the two vectors added together so if you know one of them you can just subtract it to get the remaining piece all right, so like this is right here, it's easy to find W2 once you found the projection, once you found W1. Because if you use this, you can uh, substitute uh, W1 as uh, C times V, it's got a multiple. Then you can distribute, figure out this is a magnitude squared. Since these are orthogonal, it's going to be zero, dot product two orthogonal things. And then uh, you just get this. If you uh, try to get C by itself, so you divide both sides by magnitude of V squared. So now you can get a projection. So it's going to be this handy formula. So I'm going to tell you now the projection is kind of like a shadow. So in this picture, it makes a lot more sense. So we have U right here. It's kind of upside down shadow. And it's being projected onto V. Notice that this has a shadow somewhere along this line. It could, it could be the whole thing, half of it, a third of it, less. We don't know. So it just has this right here. All right, so we're going to decompose this vector into its components. Find the projection of u at 3, negative 5 onto v, 6, 2. Then write u as a sum of two orthogonal vectors, one of which is the projection of u onto v. So first we have to find w1. w1 is the projection of v on u, which is this formula. The dot product of u times v, which is 8, over the magnitude of v squared which would be 40. Then we're going to times that by V itself. So 8 over 40 times 6, 2 gets a 6 over 5, 2 over 5. Notice that's what this point is right here. That is 6 over 5, about a 1.2, and 2 out of 5 with 0.4. So 1.224. Uh, 0.4. All right. Once you know W1, to find W2, you just do U minus W1, because W1 and W2 together make this U, this resultant. So 3 negative 5 minus 6 over 5, 2 over 5 gets you 9 over 5, negative 27 over 5. So we now found the two pieces, W1, W2. You need to check. If you add W1, W2, you should get the original U back. Yeah, so 6 over 5 plus 9 over 5 is 3. 2 over 5 times, uh, plus negative 27 over 5 is negative 5. All right, you can find the force. Same thing here. This picture, we know the car is 200 pounds. 
and this only in the y direction says so j so this is negative 200 j there's no i you can say zero i if you want then you can find v's components by using the i and j and there's cosine 30 sine of 30 you get this then we do the projection you use the formula you multiply it out remember the i component for f is zero so that makes this pretty simple so this is negative 200 times one half times v fill it out you get this so now we know that the magnitude of this force is 100 so 100 pounds is to keep this from rolling backwards down this hill or down this ramp all right last thing is work uh, work done by constant force along line of motion is given by this but if it's not along a line of motion if it's at a diagonal you have a different formula all right so here are the two formulas in projection form dot product form uh, we're going to use them Here's the last problem, finding work. So to close the sliding door, a person pulls a rope with a constant force of 50 pounds at a constant angle of 60 degrees. In this picture, find the work done, moving a door 12 feet to its closed position. All right, so we're gonna use this projection. So we use this formula. The work done is the projection of F onto PQ uh, using the, the projection form. So notice, uh, is this cosine of 60 degrees times F? We know F is 50, cosine 60 is 1 half. And then PQ, P to Q is 12. Multiply all together, 300 foot pounds. So here, 300 foot pounds is the answer, and we can verify if we want by multiplying the vectors F. And you can calculate the dot product. All right, that's it for the video. Make sure you're asking questions. Um, also, feel free to Google or YouTube dot product or vectors to get additional examples from other teachers as well i don't mind but make sure you learn this stuff uh this does help us a lot of trick stuff if you're bad at the bearings again this is mr win thanks for watching bye